Now often when doing a ninja physics calculation you're going to have to estimate some number. Of course you can often look them up on the internet, but then often the internet numbers don't tell you what you actually need and often they're very unreliable. So it's always worthwhile to be able to estimate it using your own common sense knowledge of the world, if only to check, double check the number you find off the internet. So the important thing about this is to use your everyday knowledge. You have a lot of common sense, you've lived in the world all your years of your life, there's a lot of knowledge in there. It may not come from a physics class, but that's what you need to use in the situation. Often you will feel you don't know these numbers, but you'll be surprised how much you can work out by bootstrapping, extrapolating off what you do know. So for example, here's a question I had to calculate when I was an undergraduate. How much force does it take to move a car? Well, you're probably thinking, I've no idea. And you're right. But use your day-to-day -day common sense knowledge. People can just about push a car on the road. That means the strength needed to push a car is about the maximum strength a human can exert. I mean, not exactly, but good to within a factor of two or so, and we're talking about ninja physics here, so a factor of two is fine. Okay, so the force needed to move a car is the same as the force a human can exert, but what's the force a human can exert? Well, what's the biggest weight you can lift? Well, I know I can get out of my chair, I can climb stairs, therefore I'm lifting my own weight. Um, humans typically weigh, what, 70, 80 kilograms, something like that. Um, call it 100. Uh, 100 times G is about 1,000. So that means a human could definitely exert 1,000 newtons worth of force. But generally speaking, most people would have trouble climbing a flight of stairs while carrying another adult. So it's more than 1,000, but certainly probably less than about 2,000. Call it 1,000, then 10 to the 3 newtons. So, the force needed to move a car on the road is about the same as the force a human uh, exerts, which is about a thousand newtons. This is an example of a very common trick to use, which is to use humans as a benchmark, because we tend to know what we can do. It's like the Renaissance philosophy of man is the measure of all things. So in this case, we're using the strength a human can exert as a force reference. Let me give another example. Let's say you looked at a five-storey office building and you wanted to estimate how tall it is. Well, you probably don't know. I don't know how tall it is. But, you know, it's got five floors. And you know that a floor is designed to hold people. It depends a bit on the building, but generally speaking, it's definitely going to be bigger than even a tall person. A tall person might be about two metres or a little bit over than that. On the other hand, in most buildings, if you jump and reach up, you can probably touch the roof or not far off. So it's probably not going to be more than three or four metres. So probably roughly three metres per floor. There's also going to be some space between the floors, but you know, it's only going to be a 10% difference, so we can ignore that for ninja physics purposes. So we're talking about ballpark three metres per floor. If it's a five-storey building, that's about 15 metres all up, which would be an estimate of the height. 15, call it 10, 10 metres. So if you have no idea what some number is and you need to estimate it, Use your day-to-day -day common sense knowledge, and it's often worthwhile using the properties of human beings as a benchmark.